Okay, uh, so we're going to get started. Um, and once again, Taisha, just let me know um, if you got any questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, but the key thing I wanted to focus on today is nomenclature. Um, so I'm going to talk specifically about naming guyonic compounds and molecular compounds. So uh, essentially what we need to understand is um, there's two there's two uh, two bonds that we should understand. Uh, before we even get started, make sure I pull it up right here. So the two bonds that I want you to pay attention to is um, covalent and ionic bonds. Okay, covalent and ionic bonds. So uh, quickly, a bond is basically something that's going to hold our atoms together. That's basically it. Now, couple different things is that a covalent bond is when we're going to have a bond between two nonmetals, okay? So because it's between two nonmetals, that means that they're sharing electrons, okay? So we want to specifically understand that covalent bonds, they share, they share electrons. Now that's going to be different from ionic bonds. Ionic bonds, basically, it's going to be between a nonmetal and metal, okay? That's the key thing. It's a nonmetal and metal but they're transferring electrons, okay? So in this case, ionic bonds, they have to be ions. They have to be ions. And here is a example down here, which is salt. Um, so if we look at this, basically we're gonna have our sodium and our chlorine. And what we see with ionic bonds is that sodium, which is a metal, likes to lose electrons, and chlorine, which is a non-metal, likes to gain electrons. So during this process with ionic bonds, that sodium is losing the electron, and that lost electron goes to the chlorine, okay? So as that electron goes to the chlorine, the chlorine gains that electron. So that's where that gaining of electrons is happening here. And as we can see, right, the sodium and chlorine comes together to form this salt, in this case, sodium chloride. Now, like I mentioned, we're focusing on naming, so I don't want to go too deep on ionic bonds. But that's just essentially what you got to understand before you can even name anything. If you can't distinguish if it's going to be an ionic or a molecular bond, uh, it's going to make it the process uh, harder when it comes to naming. Now, essentially what we're going to talk about today is ionic bonds, and let's focus on ionic bonds first. So a couple of different things with ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are always going to have a couple of different things. The first is that they're always going to have a positive and negative anion. Okay, ion, excuse me. So we're going to have that positive, which we call that positive ion, a cation, and the negative ion we call anions. Okay. So an ion, ionic compound will always have both of these. If it doesn't have a cation and an anion, it's not an ionic compound. Now, second thing is that with these compounds, if it doesn't have a charge in a compound, we're going to assume that it's going to be a neutral compound. So basically, that means that the positive ions and the negative ions balance with each other. Okay. So we look down here, for example, let's say I got calcium and I got chlorine, right? Calcium, in this case, the calcium ion, this is showing me that there's a positive two charge for my calcium. This is showing me that chlorine has a negative one charge for my chlorine here. So when it comes to forming the actual compound, right? This is letting me know a couple of different things that when it comes to balancing them, right, in order to get to a neutral compound, I need an overall charge of zero. So if I look at my cation, I just said that this has a positive two charge. So because it has a positive two charge, I need two chlorines for every one calcium to balance that out. And we see this over here. So we can see for every one calcium, right, that has that plus two charge, we have two chlorines. In this case, I need two chlorines for every one calcium. 
And this is my balanced, balanced chemical formula here, okay? So this is how we're gonna write the formula based off what's given to us. Now, before I get to naming, uh, you got any questions so far? This is like a quick example. I'm gonna give a couple more examples, but do you got any questions so far? I don't. Good, cool. All right, so we have this one right here. Um, let's talk about when we go to name this. So when it comes to naming, all you need to remember is that cations are first, anions are second. Okay, that's the first thing to remember. Cation first, anion second. So remember that the cation is the positive ion. So usually cations are always going to be metals. Now, the second, right, in this case, is going to be the anion. That's the negative ion. And that's the thing that we're going to have to change in this case. So when we think about salt, right, great example of an ionic compound. We're going to take salt, which is just sodium and chlorine, together. So when we are going to name this compound, we're going to do it like this. Sodium comes first. That's my cation. With the cation, we do not change anything. We keep it as the element's name. So sodium followed by our anion. Our anion, in this case, we need to change that anion ending from, in this case, chlorine to chloride. So that chlorine becomes chloride, which we see here. And that's it, that's the only thing that we change. So cations first, anion second, and we change the ending of our anion to IDE. So do we and always we do... change the ending to the ions or is it just? Yes, yeah, so we will always change the ending to the an anion every okay. single time. Okay. Yep. So like, look at this example right here, all right? So even though it's Li2, we still just call it lithium, right? Li is lithium. So we're going to keep that exactly the same. You do not change anything with it. You just literally look at the periodic table, see that that's Li, okay, that's lithium. Now, the second element is oxygen, right? Now, remember, in this case, for the second element, we have to change the ending. So it's not going to be lithium oxygen. It's going to be lithium oxide. So I changed the oxygen to oxide. In this case, replacing the gen to IDE for oxide. And we do this every single time. So if I look over here, right, MGBR2, can you tell me why this is this name? Is it magnesium and bromine? bromine? Exactly, exactly. So we got magnesium and bromine, and then why is the bromine changed here? Because it's the anion. Exactly, exactly. So it's the same thing every single time, right? That first thing is the cation, which is always gonna be a metal. We just list that out, magnesium. And then since that's bromine, we change this bromine to bromide, and that's it. That's how we're going to, that's how we're naming our ionic compounds in this case. Even if we look at this other example real fast. Calcium, CA, so I will look that up on my periodic table, see that that's calcium, just place that as my first element. That's my cation. Second one is the anion, so it's gonna go second. In this case, this S, if I look on the periodic table, is sulfur. So I'm changing my sulfur to sulfide here. And this is where we get calcium sulfide. Questions so far? Any questions so far? Nope. Okay. So this is what we call like the first type. Um, usually with the first type, these are in my main group elements. So basically, um, if we look over here, uh, you see this little bold black line? This bold black line is telling me that everything towards the left of this bold black line is going to be metals. Everything towards the right of this bold black line will be non-metals, okay? 
So that's how we're figuring out if it's going to be a metal or non-metal. Now, going back here, let's see, the second type involves transition metals. So we go back to this table right here. Basically, this entire middle column, right, this whole middle portion is where we're going to find our transition metals. Now, what we want to understand the difference between transition metals and my metals over here, right? We call these main group metals, basically. But with transition metals, they can have multiple charges, okay? So in this case, like if I look at my alkaline uh, earth metals versus my alkaline metals, okay, these are types of groups, basically. Uh, but essentially, this first column that has this 1A, this means that all of these metals are going to have a positive one charge. If I look at this second column with two-way, all of these metals are going to have a positive two charge. Okay, But if I get over here in the middle, that's where it's going to be different. So some of these metals can have one, two, or even three different types of charges. And this is where naming is going to be different for these transition metals. So it's still going to be the same format. Everything's still going to be cation first, anion second. The only difference this time is now we have to include Roman numerals to help me decide and tell, right, the charge for that metal. So let's look at an example here. Let's say I got CrBr3, all right? CrBr3. Cr, I'm going to look it up on my periodic table, and I want to see that Cr means chromium. It's a transition metal. It's in that middle portion, all right? If I go back, Cr, uh, right there, 24. So I look it up, CR chromium. Okay, so since I understand that it's an ionic compound, right? Because CR is a metal, BR we know is going to be a non-metal as we looked at the previous examples. So I know I have an ionic compound. Then I'm going to just name my first element, in this case, my cation, chromium. And as well, it's going to be the same format. My anion is going to be bromine, so I'm going to change my INE to IDE. So now my bromine has become bromide. Everything's still the same from before. Now, the only thing that we have to do now is we have to add in, in this case, the charges. So now, right, because chromium can have multiple charges. So for this instance, we have to figure out, well, what is the charge for chromium, right? How do we figure that out? So the way that we figure that out is essentially we're going to have to solve for my chromium, all right? Think of this as a little bit algebra if you want to go about that. So if I look at CRBR3, I don't see a charge in the top right-hand corner. So if you ever see a charge in the top right-hand corner, for example, if this was like a plus or if this was like a plus two, that's telling you the charge of the overall compound. If you don't see a number there, then that means that the charge is zero. So it's neutral. So my goal is I need to balance right, both of these elements to get to a charge of neutral, or in this case, zero. That's what we're trying to figure out here. So how are we going to do that? All we're going to do is basically the easiest way I can think to explain this is that we add up all of our anions, we set that equal, in this case, uh, to zero, and then we solve for CR. So what I mean by that, let's see if I can write on this. I cannot write on this, okay. So what I mean by that is basically, I have BR, which in this case, bromine is a negative one. How do we know that bromine has a charge of negative one? Because if we look over here to our periodic table, here's another good thing to understand. So what I mentioned before, if you see 1A, that lets me know I have a positive one. 2A, I have a positive two. 3A, I have a positive three. 
But if we look at this column for 5A, all of these elements are always going to have a charge of minus 3. 6A, if we look at this entire column over here, all of these elements are always going to have a charge of minus 2. 7A, and all of these elements in this column here are always going to have a charge of minus 1. Okay. Um, I'm not... Uh, there's a reason why, but right now I just want, want you to focus on memorizing. All right, just understand that those are the charges. There is a reason why, but we get to that a little bit later. The focus now is just name. So bromine, we know it's going to be minus one. So when we look over here, we have three bromines, right? So that means that I have a minus three equal to zero. Once again, I, I have a minus three equal to zero. So if I want to balance, right, this compound, what should my chromium be to balance that to get to zero? A positive three? Okay, you yeah. said it had a minus three. Okay. Yep, yep, so that's exactly right, right? We got a positive three for chromium. And then we have three bromine, so that's going to be minus three. So three minus three is zero. So that means that I have a neutral compound, which is good, right? Because we don't see any charges over here. So here's the thing, though. Once we figure out that the chromium is a positive three, just how you said, right? We need to put that in our actual uh, name. So let's go back to our chromium. Right, which is our cation going first. Bromine is our anion, so we're going to change that to IDE for bromide. Now, now that we know the charge of chromium, we're going to put chromium three in Roman Roman numerals. So this three is letting me, letting you, letting everybody know that the charge for chromium is three. So that's the reason why it's so important to include the Roman numerals or transition metals, right? Because chromium can have multiple charges. But we need to understand that for this particular compound, it has a charge of positive three. You got any questions so far? I'm still a little bit confused. Okay, so if it was initially negative three, that was the charge. And we, how did we change it to positive three? Yeah. So bromine in this case, one bromine is negative one, but for all of the bromines, that's minus three. And we're trying to balance that minus three out. So my chromium has to be a positive three to balance out all of my negative ones over here, all of my all of my bromines, basically. Okay. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> I think I got it. I just can keep going. Okay. Okay. It's perfectly fine. Feel free to jump in. Um, let me look at one more. Let me look at a couple of other examples real fast. Um, and I might do some just to where we're writing it down because I can't necessarily write it down and show everything here. Um, but let's look at this one. Fe2O3. So let's think about once again what we have. Fe is iron. Okay, and we can look that up if we just go to our periodic table. Iron, Fe is going to be iron. O, I know it's going to be oxygen. So right now when I look at this, I see a metal and iron, and I see a O for oxygen. So I understand that oxygen is a non-metal. So immediately I understand that I have an ionic compound. Now iron as well is a transition metal. How do we know it's a transition metal? Because it's in that middle. It's in the middle. So that means that iron in this fact can have multiple charges. So how do we determine this? So in this case, oxygen, let's figure out overall what, what are the charges for three oxygens. Okay, because I understand that my goal is to balance right, this chemical formula here. If we look over here, 6A, oxygen has a minus two for its charge. 
And if you ever hear somebody refer to charges as oxidation states, it's the same thing. Right now, I just want you to focus on just charges, thinking of it as charges. So we're trying to get to zero in this case, because it's a neutral compound. That's our goal here. I have three oxygens. One oxygen means minus two. So what is the total for all three of my oxygens here? Okay, for some reason I lost the screen. I'm trying to get back to it. When I got a call, it kicked me out of the, I can't see your screen anymore. I guess because I'm still connected to the video, but I can see you, but I can't see. You can't see the screen anymore? Me stop. I tried to go back. I tried to go back in. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then no. that's probably something happened on my end. Oh, there you go. Can you see it now? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So if I have, matter of fact, I think this one probably is going to be easier if I use this little thing. Let me try this out. This little whiteboard thing. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, I just write it. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got Fe two and O three, and this is a neutral compound because I don't see any type of number over here in the top right hand corner. So I understand that my goal is to balance out right my charges. In this case, I'm trying to get to zero. Now, I mentioned that oxygen has a charge of minus two. We know that. It's always going to be the same. It does not change. So because I have oxygen, which is a minus two, right, when it comes to adding up all three of my oxygens in total, right, one oxygen, two oxygen, three oxygen, that means that in total, I have a total of minus six. Okay. We set that equal to zero. Let me know, are you are you with me so far with the minus six? Yep, probably. Okay. So what is my goal now? What, what am I trying to do with my iron? You want to make it occur with the positive six so I can cancel out? Or, you know? Exactly, right? So you said that in this case, we know that the ultimate number is going to have to be six, right? Because we're trying to balance them out. I need a positive six and I got a negative six. So that's the only thing that's going to balance it out. Now, the thing is, right, I have two irons. So we have to break this six down, right, into two irons. So what are you thinking for one iron that charge is going to be? Hey. Yes, exactly right. So in this case, my iron for one iron is a positive three. But because I got two of them, I got a six here. Now, six minus six gives me zero. So that's good. We just figured out just our charges for both of my compounds. And that's going to be key for when it, we're going to name the compound because Basically, what we're going to find out is that you can't name this compound if you don't know the charge. Okay. So let's think about how we're going to name this thing. Iron. That's going to be, right, my cation, mm -hmm. which we mentioned that cations go first. Okay. So we don't change anything with that, right? It's just going to be iron. Mm -hmm. Now, oxygen, that's my anion. Do we have to change that? Yes, we change it to oxide. Exactly. So oxide. My, my, my handwriting is pretty terrible on this thing. I don't know how to do <laughs> this, but it's oxide. That's oxide there. So we got iron oxide. Now, because we have a transition metal in this case, remember... We are, we're going to have to include those Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. So usually the Roman numeral goes directly after the metal. 
because that is telling me the charge for my metal. So in this case, what should that Roman numeral be for my iron? Three. Yes, exactly, right? So I'm gonna put a one, two, three. So this is letting me, letting you, letting everybody know that this compound here is iron three oxide. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got to the conclusion. And then it's the same thing every single time, right? Cation first, we don't change anything. Anion second, but making sure that we change that ending to IDE. And if you have a transition metal, which is that middle portion, you need to include Roman numerals. And then that's basically it. That's basically it when it comes to naming ionic compounds. Um, what questions do you have? I think I asked them all already. Okay, okay. Um, and then how are you feeling with naming ionic compounds? I think I got it. I think so. So if I gave you one, could you do it? I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let, let me give you one. Let me give you one real fast. Let's see. Um, let's give let's give this one right here. C A C L. What is the name of this compound here? I can't remember which one. Okay, so <laughs> calcium has a, a a positive two charge. Yep. Okay. Um, What's the charge for that chlorine? Um, trying to find it. Negative one or is it zero? Now oh, tell me, hold on. You gave me two different answers, so I'm trying to figure out which one it is then. <laughs> so you said negative one or zero. Which one do you want to go with? Mm, let's go with zero. Okay. So what made you go with zero? Because I couldn't, I'm looking at my, you know, when you're showing your screen, I can't tell the A, A5, A7. It's not on the one I'm looking at. Okay, so, gosh. I was just guessing because <laughs> it's in that okay. direction. <laughs> so in this case, when you look at your periodic table, mm -hmm. that chlorine is going to be a minus one. Okay. Now, there's a reason why, like I said, and we're going to get to that eventually. But the key thing to understand is like, this is how you can look at it. It goes from that last period. It's going to go always minus one minus two, minus three. Okay. But essentially, yeah, I don't even want to get into it because it's a it's a long explanation as far as why, which we're going to talk about the why. But okay. yeah, essentially just understand that those chlorine, so that entire, that entire uh, column is all going to be minus one, always. Okay. So now that we got the charges, which is great, how should we go about naming the actual compound now? What should be the first word? Calcium. Okay. Um, and the charge should be... So calcium. And then is calcium... Here's a question to you. Is calcium a 
transition metal or is it not a transition metal? It's not. Yes. It's just... So here's one thing. Because it's not a transition metal, you don't even have to put the Roman numerals for it. Okay. 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 So it's just calcium chloride? Exactly. Exactly right. So in this case, taking that chlorine and then changing that ending to I, D, oh, there we go, E. Exactly right. Um. Okay, great job. Any questions about this? No, I don't think so. I just need practice, but I don't have any more questions. Feel it, feel it. Um. Now let's... Uh, let me go over the next one because I, I want to cover ionic bonds with you and then I'm going to cover molecular bonds. Yep. And those are the main two. Um, and then on, uh, let's see, clear all these. Stop that share. Okay. Okay. And then this is a summary again, like group five, group six, group seven, always going to be the same, et cetera. Um, let me show the next one. Let me. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go over this because this is essentially ionic compound still, um, but this is polyatomic ions. Basically, quick summary of this is that I would suggest you knowing majority of these. You will have to know majority of these. Now, I want to tell you exactly which ones you should probably want to study more. Um, mm -hmm. So if you look over here, these ones over here, hypochlorites, chlorides, chlorates, these are good ones to know. Perchlorate too. I will also say no nitrite and no nitrate and hydroxide. Okay. Phosphate, sulfate, and sulfite, and then that's it. I'll probably say the no for sure those. Now, uh, like I said, I'm about to tell you about molecular compounds, but essentially, the same. These are basically anions. Okay, most of these are anions. How do we know they're anions? Because they have these negative charges. So when it comes to naming them, it's gonna be the same same strategy we just did with the regular ionic compounds, right? So the one that you just did, calcium chloride. Let's say we had sulfate, right? In this case, it, it will be called calcium sulfide. Mm -hmm. All right, changing that. Okay, so it's basically the same thing. Uh, but the key thing is just to know the actual ions. Um, and then I, I can briefly talk about this as a good way just to remember this. So we see these different, like, like these, what we call series. Okay, mm -hmm. so when we look at this one right here, hypochlorite, chlorite, chlorate, and perchlorate. What do they all have in common here? What, what two elements do they have in common? Chlorine and oxygen. Exactly. So the only difference is that some of them have more oxygens, some of them have less. So let's look at these middle two. If you have more oxygen, you're going to be an ATE, eight. That means that you have more. If you have an ITE, you have less. So in this case, my chlorate has one chlorine and three oxygens. My chlorite, ITE, has one chlorine, two oxygens. So it has less than my chlorate. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, the other thing you should know is the prefixes. Hypo, right? When we think about hypo, we think about low, right? Hypothermia, anything dealing with hypo. Mm -hmm. So the same thing applies in chemistry. If you got hypo, that means that you're going to have the least or the lowest amounts of whatever you're looking at. So in this case, hypochlorite means that we have the least amount of oxygens. Notice as well, the ITE is for the hypo, right? Because it's less, so we have the lowest in this case. Okay. 
Now that's going to be different from if we have the most. In this case, more is per. So we have chlorate, but if we have one more oxygen, we call that per chlorate. So notice, right, we go from three oxygens to four oxygens. Mm -hmm. And this is the same with all of these series. So how I told you to look at nitrate and nitrate, notice nitrate, I-T-E, has N-O-2, right, two oxygens, compared to nitrate, which has three oxygens. Mm -hmm. If we look at phosphate, phosphate has four oxygens. I don't have false fights on here, but can you guess what false fight is? It's gonna have two or three, maybe two. In this case, three, right? So one less in this case, but exactly okay. right. If you see ITE, it's meaning less. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, this is this is polyatomic ions. It's the same thing as ionic compounds itself. When we're talking about poly polyatomic, that just means that it has multiple atoms. That's all it is. But also understand, look at the charges. So if I'm looking at chloride, it has a charge of minus one. So that means that this entire polyatomic ion is minus one. So that's gonna be key for when you go to uh, name a compound, which I, I can probably do an example if you would like, but I just wanna make sure with Tom, that we cover molecular compounds real fast. Okay. Okay. So let's look at molecular compounds. Molecular compounds is a lot more simple uh, to name than ionic compounds, to be real with you. So molecular compounds is you're going to follow the same order that you follow with ionic compounds. Okay. Now, the thing we need to realize with molecular compounds is that this is between two nonmetals. So because it's between two nonmetals, they're sharing electrons. Now that's good to know, but it's not going to impact when it comes to naming in this case. Uh, not as, not yet. So how do we name molecular compounds? It's very simple. You're going to keep the elements in order and you're going to name in that order. Okay. okay. That got me thinking about Nene leaks. I'm sorry, in that order. Okay. So <laughs> first element is going to be exactly the same, just how we deal with ionic compounds. First element is full name. The second element is where you're going to change the ending, right, in this case, that second one to I-D-E. So basically, it's still the same thing. Now, the only difference this time is that we have to include prefixes this time. So let's look at an example. N2O. N2O. When it comes to naming this compound, right, I'm going to do di because in this instance, this lets me know I have two nitrogens. So I don't have my prefixes on this slide here, but the prefixes that we're using is the standard ones. Mono means one, di means two, tri is three, uh, tetra, and so on, right? I'm going to see if I can find my list here in a bit. Um, but in this case, we got two. So we got di nitrogen. This is letting me know I have two nitrogens. Notice it's the first mm -hmm. element, so we keep that exactly the same. We do not change that. The only difference this time with molecular compounds is that I need to include prefixes. The second one, right, is my oxygen. I changed my oxygen to oxide. So that's still the same. But now, I need to include a prefix to let me know how many oxygens I have. Well, I have one oxygen, so I'm going to say monoxide. So for this compound, this is di-nitrogen, because there's two nitrogens, and monoxide, because there's one oxygen here. And once again, we change that oxygen to IDE. Now let's look at this one right here, NO. This is what we call nitrogen monoxide so notice how in this case we don't need to say that this is mono nitrogen it's redundant right if it's going to be implied that if i say nitrogen okay i understand you only got one nitrogen so you don't have to do mono nitrogen okay. so i'm going to do nitrogen 
And because I have one oxygen, it's mon, right? Meaning one, monoxide. We change that oxygen to IDE. And if we look at these last two over here, right, NO2, just showing you all different examples here, NO2. Nitrogen, right, goes first. We don't put the mononitrogen or anything like that, just by itself, the first element's full name. And then second, right, we have two oxygens. So we change the oxygen to IDE, the second element, oxide, and then we include the prefixes to indicate the number of atoms. In this case, we have two oxygens, so we should say di for two oxide. So this full name is nitrogen dioxide. And then let's look at this last example right here. N2O3. So I have two nitrogens, three oxygens. So when it comes to naming it, same model. Nitrogen goes first. We do not change that, touch that. But we need to add our prefix to let me know how many I have. So I have two nitrogens here. So that's going to be what? Di nitrogen. I got three oxygens over here, right? So that oxygen became oxide. And this three, I'm going to use tri, because this is letting me know I have three oxygens. So it's going to be tri oxide. Questions so far? Any questions? Nope. So what is... Give me the formula. So now I'm going to do it in reverse. I'm going to give you the name nitrogen triiodide. Tell me what is the chemical formula for this compound? Oh, what's the chemical name for iodine? Let's see. Just... Is it just I? For yep, iodine? It's just I. Yeah. Okay. So it will be Ni3? Exactly. Exactly right. Right, N, because that's letting me know nitrogen just by itself. And then I died, right? You figured out, okay, that's the I, but then it says try. So you got to do three of those. Exactly right. Um, let's do all of these. Let's just good practice here. What about B? Phosphorus penta chloride. Okay, just a second. Okay. I need to brush up on my elements. So is, mm, phosphorus, I don't even see it. Is it P or pH? It's or P. No? It's P, okay, so. Yeah. So it will be P, CL4. Close, very, very close. So in this case, Penta Penta, five. Sorry. Yep, so five. that's fine. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, that's it's gonna be P for phosphorus, penta, because there's five of them, chlorine. So PCL5. Exactly right. Um, what about C? Do that last one for me. So tetra is four, right? Yep. Okay, so mm -hmm. P4. So far, it is S or S U? It's gonna be S. Yep. S. Okay. So P four S ten. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Now, yeah, you got it exactly right. That Tesla lets me know there's four phosphorus, which we do P four, and then we got this sulfur, which is S, but that deca means ten. So we got a total okay. of ten S's there. So we write it out P four S ten exactly how you said. Um. So we can see, right, I feel like, to me personally, I think molecular compounds are a little bit easier than ionic compounds. Just because mm -hmm. with ionic compounds, you're going to have to balance out the charges overall. Um, but with this one, there is no balancing. All you're, all you're doing is essentially saying how many you have. Okay. Um, any questions? Any questions? No, like you said, this one was easier than the previous one, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Um. Do you want me to do any more examples? That's all I was going to do for today. Um, there's some other things uh, that are that I will cover in a, probably another video. Uh, but do you want me to do any other type of examples? 
Nope, I think we're good. Okay, okay. Uh, well, that's it. Thank you for coming. Um, if you got any type of questions that pop up or if you got any questions with the homework, please feel free to email me. Okay, we will do. Thank All you. Right. Have a good well, day. you have a good day and uh, be safe out there. It's it's cold, you know, saying that you safe and everything warm. Yep, I don't get out of this, so I'll be home. <laughs> okay, I feel that. I'm home right now, so yeah, I get it. Be safe as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you next time. All right, bye bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Don't Be Scared. We hope you found this discussion valuable, helpful, and informative. You can reach us through our website, social media, or by leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform. Five stars, y'all. And don't forget to check out our resources and services at Don't Be Scared, where we help organizations and individuals engage with science and pursue their dreams in the field.